Hello, and welcome to the watering hole. Thanks for checking out this clip. Don't forget to like and subscribe because that'll make the baby Jesus cry. And I know how much you guys love making the baby Jesus cry. So starting with Florida school district pulls dictionaries and encyclopedias as part of inappropriate content review. Um, this comes to us from CBS news, and this was sent to me by anonymous. <laughs> Wait, Wait a second, they're, they're just pulling so, whole ass dictionaries and encyclopedias? Yeah, so um, I listen to all the Puzzle in a Thunderstorm podcasts. I forget which one they covered this on back when this law was first passed. Um, it's, it's the Florida House Bill 10, so I don't know, we'll get to the number and thing. But um, basically, they the schools are not allowed to contain any books that have any descriptions of sex or sexuality or anything like that. Um, I think it actually is in the same bill as the don't say gay bill, uh, where like they, like the only sex ed you can teach has to be like straight hetero, or, like straight cis sex. Um, but like the joke that they were making on either the skeptocrat or the scathing atheist, probably the skeptocrat because this is more politics related, but uh, the joke they were making on there is that like with the wording of this law, the dictionary should be banned. <laughs> and now here we are. The dictionary yeah. is banned because when you look up sex in the dictionary, um, I, like it's, it's different in different di dictionaries. The one that I looked up for this was a bit archaic. It was like when a penis enters into a vagina or like that was basically it. And it's like, okay, there's a lot more to sex than that. That's like, come on. But like, that is a description of sex. Yeah. So according mm -hmm. to the letter of the law, dictionary banned. Yeah, um, but I, I can't wait for them to figure out that fellatio is probably in there too. Uh, also, cunnilingus. Uh, let's see what else can we? <laughs> on there? Well, we can we can just go to dictionary.com. Sorry, the, the crop <laughs> is not going to be good in this, but um, start typing any word or phrase. Um, fellatio, fellatio, oral stimulation of the penis, especially to orgasm. There you go. Oh, can't have. And Dictionary.com Dictionary blocked. Banned. <laughs> blocked. They're trying to indoctrinate our kids. <laughs> okay. My my father is a librarian. Um, and so he has many, many books of varying topics and uh, genres and everything all over his house. And as a kid, I did find his sex book section. And I enjoyed some of the pictures of the sex book section. But it was also like, it wasn't just like, it wasn't just like a kid that like, oh, I found basically, um, porn before the internet. It was, um, it was also educational. Cause that was like the first time I saw a diagram of a vagina that was like labeled and everything. So like, I knew where the clip was before I would knew, before I learned why I would want to know where the clip was. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, school district in Florida is looking to extend its state's book ban to an unexpected genre, dictionaries. Um, so the list of banned books was uh, obtained and published by the nonprofit Pen America. The Escambia County School District has included five dictionaries, eight encyclopedias, and the Guinness Book of World Records in its list of more than 1,600 books that could soon be banned. I want to know what world record is sexually explicit. <laughs> Lady with the biggest tits. Like, I don't know. Guinness. Uh, ex Go ahead. There, I, I was just going to say Guinness is kind of shit. Like they're basically it's pay to play. You pay them to send a guy out. And they'll, like, oftentimes they'll tell you that like, Hey, we don't have a record for this yet. So if you just do that, we'll send a guy out and give you the record for it. Um, so like, it's not like Guinness is educational. That's not like a great loss, but like, it's a book like it. And you know what? It might be full of shit records, but it can spark some curiosity in kids. Like they can, like, I remember reading Guinness and then like using that as a springboard to like look up different things like, oh, that's a weird thing. I didn't know people could do that. And then I would start looking into it and it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, Otaku Senpai says longest penis. Um, uh, actually, so you know what? I think there might actually be a record for the, uh, the furthest distance ejaculated. <laughs> most frequent sex is one that comes up uh mm. apparently the record holder for that is scaly ricket 
or that, cricket scaly cricket i was gonna say scale australia okay scaly cricket still doesn't sound like a good name for someone to hold that record but scaly ricket is even worse <laughs> uh and apparently it's 50 uh, fi- uh 50 total number uh let's see uh the ma- oh the male scaly cricket uh, oh, oh. apparatus from it's a australia. type of oh it's a type of animal okay Right. I'm like, uh, I'm like, tr- I'm thinking of some dude named Scaly Cricket. I'm like, that's got to be yeah. a nickname. That can't be his actual name. But this is Australia we're talking about. So maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently it can copulate more than 50 times in three to four hours. Oh. What about that? All with the f- same female. What about that mouse that I think is also in Australia that literally fucks itself to death? Uh, like the, the male will like when it's mating season, it, it just has as much sex as it possibly can to the exclusion of all other activities, including eating. So it just like fucks until it dies. Damn that, that that's that's some crazy stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. So the list Probably of books. The world's strongest vagina. That's what? definitely banned. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got why this is banned. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop looking up sex records. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you find now? Oh no, I just I stopped after the strongest vagina. Like, okay, how do you test that? I guess you. I don't wait. know. I don't know. <laughs> that just seems um, kind of ridiculous. There's the hats. Okay, now you have to put on a silly hat. Okay. Ah. And because this came at the end of my tech support thing that I'm going to be cutting out the final video, we both will suddenly just be wearing silly hats when it comes back to it. You didn't hear a word of what I just said. No, sorry. Yeah, what did you say? Be- because this came directly after my uh, trying to figure out technical crap, um, I will cut this out of the edited video and it'll just be suddenly we're wearing stupid hats for no apparent reason. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the Freedom to Read Project is a nonprofit that was started in 2021 once Florida started to initiate book bans in schools across the state. And uh, the school district has a list of books that have been formally challenged on its website as well, which shows that several books have already been restricted and removed, including Alice Siebold's Lucky um, and a bunch of other books. Uh, amusingly, one of the books that is uh, is banned is called Ban This Book. And... <laughs> It's the story of a kid who goes to the school library and uh, discovers that their favorite book has been banned. And so then they start a reading a banned books club. You you know, what's the most unbelievable part of that? The kid went to a public library. No, it was a school library. Hey, I love the, I love the fucking library as a kid. It was amazing. Oh no. I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I, I think it, I think it is too, but, um, I don't know. In my experience, like kids aren't going to libraries. <laughs> like, like, I mean, c- just because of the, uh, amount of access that you have online and everything like that, mm. I just, I, I feel like, you know, you, if you need a book, you can easily go online and get a book in uh, some kind of fashion. Fun fact. Most libraries have a partnership system with, uh, one or more audiobook provider that uh, oh. you can use your library card to borrow audiobooks. Oh, that's cool. Um, you have to look up what they're like. If if that's something that interests you, actually go to your library and talk to them about it because I forget what the services are called. But um, yeah, that's that's definitely a thing to attempt to make use of. Libby, Fennec the Rabbit is saying is Libby. That that is one of them. I have used that one. Um, yeah. So according to Penn America, the list consists of more than 1600 books, uh, banned pending investigation in December. Um, among titles on the list are yet yeah, more list of titles and Frank's diary is banned. So, yeah, I think, uh, in that one, um, she- I know that a lot of parents have had problems with that for a while because, uh, apparently Anne Frank describes masturbation. Yeah, she, she does. She does. It's the diary of a girl going through puberty. There's going to be some yeah. sexual content. Um, oh, definitely. Like, I think it's ridiculous, obviously. But yeah, like that's um, that's a that's a historically important book that mm-hmm. needs to be available. Um, yeah. Uh, also on the list are Merriam-Webster's Elementary Dictionary, the Bible Book, uh, the World Book Encyclopedia of uh, Encyclopedia. <laughs> 
<laughs> remember when i said i'm not drinking scotch because i don't want to get too wasted tonight i'm i'm like not even halfway through my first beer and it's just a baby can <laughs> already saying things like encyclopedia uh the world book encyclopedia of people and places the guinness book of world records 2000 webster's dictionary and thesaurus for students and the american heritage children's dictionary a children's dictionary and with a name like the American Heritage Children's Dictionary, I almost expect that that's a dictionary that's been put out by, like, one of these gay people don't exist organizations. Yeah. That's um, what it sounds like, at least. But yeah, uh, so I actually took a look at the book, or at, at the uh, list, just, um, it wasn't, like, not the whole list of 1600, but just, like, one of the shorter lists. And, mm. um, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy and and the bible is one that has been officially challenged it has not um but that that's one that of course they fast-tracked the investigation into that one and they found that it did not violate the rules despite the fact that it is very explicit about sexual depictions in some places like and there she lusted after her lovers whose emissions were like those of horses and genitals were like those of donkeys like yeah donkey dicks and horse cum is pretty sexually explicit and that's without even getting to the whole book of erotic poetry that's in the bible yeah the the one that i like out of that way i don't know if this is from that particular section of the bible but um i can't get past this one where the like they're like talking through a door or something like that and like he puts his hand through the door and it says that the woman's bowels moved or whatever and i'm like wait he put his hand under the door and she took a shit in it so um <laughs> that that might have been a translation dependent uh, thing because I know um, and I don't know how true this is because I learned about it in my Christian high school and I've learned a lot of mm -hmm. sketchy things from there that I've later found out were not correct but one of the things that they taught me was that um, in ancient Israel um, they considered they didn't think of the heart as your emotional organ because when you feel emotions it's usually not in the heart it's usually down in the gut so like almost every time when the Bible is describing some emotion that is being felt in the heart, if you go back to the original text, the Hebrew word there would be better translated as bowels because they feel things in their bowels. They don't feel it in their heart. So when you move me, you have moved my bowels. Wow. So that's yeah, one of, that's I've one of those bits. Been, of, yeah. I've never been so moved by somebody that has shit myself, but you know, I have sneezed hard enough for that, but you know, <laughs> never emotionally <laughs> when i look into your eyes it triggers my ibs <laughs> yeah um cbs news reached out to the school district but for comment but did not hear back prior to publication in a statement to the messenger a spokesperson for the district said the books have not been banned or removed from the school district rather they've simply been pulled for further review to ensure compliance with the new legislation um they say that to suggest otherwise is disingenuous and counterproductive but like no, this is one of those things that should not like, yeah, they're not technically banned yet, but pending investigation, they are not available to students. So they are effectively banned. Um, yeah, like li it's, it's one of those, like, it, it's like when, uh, when you go to appeals court and a judge issues a stay for something and that's like, whatever you've just done, like, that's not in effect anymore. That's essentially been canceled pending whatever investigation or whatever conclusions the judge comes to later. There's another oh, hydrate. Wait. It's a hydrate. Okay. Yeah. It, um, so yeah, it is effectively banned, even if it's not technically banned. Um, so the list shows that fewer than 70 books so far have been analyzed out of 1600. Uh, so I did a little bit of math on this. This started happening uh, like last June. It started happening, but like, let's just give them the summer break and say that it started in September because like they weren't reviewing these books over the summer. They've only been doing it for the last five months. So it's been 138 days since September 1st, um, which that's, I don't know when you like school starts at different, like some places it starts in August, some places it starts like second week of September. So I figure that's a good jumping off point. Uh, yeah. they've, they've reviewed 70 books in that time. So that's 0 0.5 books per, per day, approximately. Um, at that rate, it would take 3,200 days or 8.7 years to review all 1,600 books that are already on their list. And the list is only going to get longer as time goes on. 
Yeah, and I I believe that's due to the fact that there just really aren't that many librarians like that are yeah they don't have employed in the state like in order to actually review these books in a timely fashion they're going to have to like create a whole new department at the school boards and hire a whole bunch more people so like this is um, this is. Um, it's it's effectively going to cost the taxpayers more money if they actually have to do this efficiently. If like if they actually do it efficiently, it's going to cost the taxpayers more money. It, you um, know what this reminds me of a little bit, um, as far as like the economics uh, of it. It reminds me of how in Tennessee they passed this law where it, you would have to like uh, do drug testing, uh, uh, a lot of drug testing, if you were going to be on. Um, uh, on uh like welfare and and other government mm-hmm. assistance and yeah. so basically they they did a bunch of testing for like a year or something like that and they they really only found like maybe one or two cases like it was a really small amount of cases where mm-hmm. it actually you know did its job otherwise it was just a big waste of money mm-hmm. and so it yeah they seems spent a me, lot of money trying to make sure that people who need money couldn't get money right and it, it seems like the same situation here. They're going to end up spending fuck tons of taxpayer money to not do anything to help taxpayers oh. or to help children or anything like that. Cause they really so, don't care about children. Like this isn't for the children. This is just another way yeah. for them to exert control over the populace. Yeah. I mean, as the Catholic church says, fuck them kids. Yeah, exactly. In uh, more ways than one for the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I just noticed that this is HB 1069. So, like, the no sex bill is the nice number. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, the yeah, HB 1069 also requires schools to teach that reproductive roles are binary, stable, and unchangeable, um, which that's just scientifically not true. Like, there was, um, there was a study. It, it's only a mouse study, so it's not necessarily um, applicable to humans. It doesn't necessarily translate to humans. But in mice, they have found that there is one single gene that if they deactivate the gene in an adult mouse... That mouse will then, like, its its gonads will actually change to the opposite sex of whatever it was born on. Hmm. Oh, we gotta change hats now. Yeah, no, no, uh, yeah. In in mice, in adult mice, there's one gene that you deactivate that um, the gonad will actually change to the opposite sex. So if if they had testes, you deactivate this gene, it'll change to ovaries. If they had ovaries, you deactiv- deactivate the gene, it'll change to testes. Um, and the like humans have the same gene like everything about the way it works in mice suggests that it should work the same way in humans so the idea that um reproductive roles are binary stable and unchangeable is just it looks like it is just like even if we take their stupid definitions of sex and gender it looks like that's still not true Uh. and And that's if we accept their definitions, which are factually incorrect. So. Right. Anyway, yeah. Um, So. According to the training presentation that was obtained by the Florida Freedom to Read Project and shared with CBS News, sexual conduct includes sexual intercourse, sexual uh, bestiality, and sexual battery, among other things. Uh, Sexually oriented material, which is also banned, includes any depiction of sexual activity, uncovered human genitals, the presentation, or uncovered human genitals, the presentation says. So, yeah, the dictionary violates that because it describes what sex is when you look up sex. And it describes what fellatio is when you look up fellatio. Also copulation. Yeah. I I believe probably, like, just any words that could mean a penis or a, or have to do with a vagina. Either one would work. I would think yeah. cause like conservatives are like, oh, you're going to say the P and the V word. Yeah. And uh, any book that is deemed questionable based on this law must be removed within five school days of receipt of the objection and cannot be returned to the shelves until it is reviewed, the bill says. So given how long the list of books is to be reviewed and how slowly they're doing it, that is effectively a ban. Because mm-hmm. at this rate, a student in kindergarten will no longer be like, I, maybe the school system set up differently in Florida, but in Canada, it's uh, kindergarten to grade eight is essentially is usually at one school and then grade nine through 12 is high school. 
So mm-hmm. someone in kindergarten could get all the way up to grade eight before they review one of the books that was banned when they were in kindergarten. So that is effectively that book was banned the entire time where they were there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in August, the district was making great strides to adhere to, uh, to HB 1069, which went into effect last July. Um, yeah. So I, I said, June, I was wrong. It was July that it went into effect, but according to the training presentation, the district started reviewing books last July and hopes to have all pulled books reviewed with a formal decision by May of 2024. I feel like that's not going to happen at the current pace. No, I mean, they'd have to really pull it out of their ass. Like, you know, in order to get that done. Yep. And oh, then well. the, uh, Casey Meehan, program director of Penn America's Freedom to Read program, said uh, Florida's new censorship landscape under laws like HB 1069 is robbing students of all kinds of important books and resources, such as those on major topics like the Holocaust and, shockingly, the dictionary. This is a massive overextension overextension of the language of the law which mandates against sexual conduct and the school must return the titles immediately. Um, I disagree with that a little bit. She's kind of putting the blame on the school board for taking the law at its word, essentially. Mm-hmm. Whereas like, as far as like, from looking at this from uh, the outside, it's, it's it's like, it's not that the school board is being malicious about it necessarily, although malicious school boards in the States definitely do exist. Um, but it looks more like the school board is just saying, Hey, according to how the law is written, the dictionary violates the law. So we're going to take the dictionary out until we get official word back from the government, whether or not it actually does violate it. And of course they did that immediately with the Bible. Oh no, you can have the Bible in schools. I wonder if the Quran would pass. Probably not. I mean, I feel like it's, it's, I feel like it's a lot less sexually explicit than the Bible is. Well, I, don't know. I I could I could see them making a case like because um I I don't know where like it talks about uh, exactly I mean like I have I I did a meme ages ago so I mean I know that that it exists within the the pages of of uh, Islamic scripture but um you know there's a lot of uh, I guess explicit descriptions of Muhammad with Aisha. And so I think that that would probably be where they build their, you know, case on is, is that particular interaction. Anyway, uh, Stefana Farrell, director of research and insight with the Florida freedom to read project told CBS news that within the last five months, fewer than 100 titles have been reviewed by the district. That's kind of repetitive because that's 70 is fewer than hundred. I feel like that's the same thing. Uh, we applaud them for doing their due diligence to read and discuss every book before making a decision to permanently ban it from the schools, but they need more dedicated trained staff to help support the effort. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. like, this is going to increase the cost of, um, uh, this is going to increase the cost of school for kids if, to the taxpayers. Mm-hmm. Like this is just wasted money. Uh, Most of these books, though pulled temporarily, as the district has stated, will never be accessible in the school library for most current secondary students. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, it's like I was going from like kindergarten to grade eight, but like this, this applies to high school as well, which is only four years. So like if it's going to take them 8.7 years to get through these things, then like someone that's in grade six now will graduate high school without having these books available to them. So it's effectively a ban. Even if yeah, it's not it, technically a ban. Uh, definitely. I mean, it it's pretty ridiculous, uh, in my opinion, because, um, you know, I'm not really so much up for censorship, um, except it w- in, in specific cases. But this just seems like a bunch of snowflakes want to exert their ability to control, like, uh, in some kind of way. And so that that's what it that's just what it seems like to me is like yeah. people that want to exert control on other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what's happening in a scam? Or no, uh, Farrell added that the guidance from the state's department of education is irresponsible. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, what's happening in Escambia is ridiculous, but it also is happening in many other districts to varying degrees. The language in the law is bad. The Florida Department of Education are the ones with the power to fix this. Until then, districts will continue to err on the side of caution, as they have been told to do at the, at the expense of our children's education. That's what I was getting to, where it's not necessarily the uh, it, it's not necessarily the school district's fault. They are just trying to avoid costly lawsuits 
Um, so yeah, on Wednesday, a judge ruled that the loss, uh, uh, Pen America has joined uh, Penguin Random House in uh, suing the district over its removals. So like, they removed them to be safe from lawsuits, and now they're being sued for removing them. So it's like it, it's a lose lose for the school district. So maybe Florida should just repeal this horrible, horrible law. Um, and on Wednesday, a judge ruled that the lawsuit can move forward, saying it has standing under the First Amendment. So yeah, Florida be banning books. And awesome. It's not good. 